End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is January 20th, 2017. Netflix had a very big Q4, gaining 7 million subscribers and definitely uh, solidifying its place at the top of the SVOD provider pile. But you know, there is one area in which Netflix is being beaten and beaten handily, at least according to strategy analytics, and that is customer satisfaction. And HBO apparently is winning in many of the categories. In fact, they asked in 14 categories and HBO now came top in 11. The there were three broad categories that they asked about search experience, availability of content and value. HBO were HBO now was tops in things like amount of content, availability of past seasons, availability of blockbuster movies and in ease of discovery. In fact, there were only three areas in which HBO now didn't win. The first of those is in kids content, that went to Hulu, and the other two went to Netflix, that is recommendations and value for money or or cost. Uh, But you know, I don't think Netflix is worrying too much about this customer satisfaction survey. Uh, There are many ways in which they are beating HBO now. Even in Strategy Analytics' own survey, Uh, When they went back and asked consumers to just give an overall customer satisfaction rating, Netflix still came out on top, even though in those individual uh, categories, they were losing to HBO Now. Uh, But much more importantly, it's in market penetration, where Netflix, of course, continues to dominate. 64% of US consumers say they used an SVOD service in Q2 2016, according to TiVo Digital Smiths. 54% of them said that they used Netflix. Only 5.6% said they used HBO Now. So really, uh, HBO Now is really not very deeply penetrated yet into the market and has a long way to go to catch up with Netflix. But there is another area where Netflix is challenged, and that is in Asia. Uh, The company freely admits that it is just getting started in that region, Uh, but they are going to have a really tough time, I think, gaining the sort of subscribers and seeing the sort of growth that they're seeing in areas like Western Europe and now in Latin America and in the US. Uh, And the reason is There is already intense competition, and this intense competition is using every advantage it can to stay ahead. I'm thinking here of iFlix. iFlix is available in seven uh, 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 countries in the region. They are Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Brunei, and the Maldives, and they have just released in Pakistan. And they have a very different approach to the market than Netflix does. Uh, According to Faris Shah, who is iFlix's GM in Pakistan, the company takes a real focus on local content. He said, we are hyper-focused on localization. And that's exactly the way Netflix, uh, iFlix works in those regions. It goes in and it partners with local providers to make sure that the top content, top local content is available in the service. Uh, and in fact, Mr. Shah claims that the, they have the largest library of Pakistan favorite TV shows and movies uh, worldwide in that service. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce some of those TV shows, TV show or movie names, uh, but the Hollywood content you absolutely will know. They have every episode of shows like Friends and Gossip, Gossip Girl. They have nine seasons of Big, Big Bang Theory. They also have recent seasons of shows like The Flash, Arrow, Gotham, Mr. Robot, Person of Interest, and many others. And if you're thinking this sounds very Netflix right, you are absolutely right. But there is one very important area where they are nothing like Netflix. You will pay just $2.89 a month, that's 300 Pakistani rupees, to get this service. Uh, and, and of course, Netflix is 
five times that amount in many of the areas where they are currently market, marketed. It will be really tough for Netflix to match that sort of price point in those Asian markets. Uh, but there is another area as well where iFlix differentiates itself. In, in the rest of the world, in rest, Western Europe and in the US, Netflix says that the vast majority of viewing takes place through, te through the television, through smart TV devices, through smart, div smart TVs and TV devices. But that is not how Asians watch. The majority watch on smartphones, tablets, and PCs. And really, most of the watching is taking place on smartphones. And iFlix targets those devices. The, the interfaces that they create and the service is really focused around watching on those devices. So that is going to be tough for Netflix to deal with, I think, in the region. The localization focus, the low price, and the intense focus on mobility really give a service like iFlix a big leg up. And I think it's going to be very tough for Netflix to see huge growth in that region, at least in the near, ter near term. But one thing we do know about Netflix is that they are persistent and they, um, they say they are a, quote, learning machine. So we'll have to see if they can come up with a formula that will work in Asia. And if they do, you bet we'll be talking about it here on End Screen Noise. We'll see you again next time.